Just for background, I'm a half black woman who grew up in a ghetto and worked damn hard through high school to earn a scholarship and full ride through college. I now work a very decent job and make a reasonable amount of money which I'm not afraid to show off, though I do maintain my ghetto heritage. Naturally, racism is a touchy subject for me. So here I'm minding my own business in a local coffee place answering some emails on my new Samsung Note 10. Day off so I'm not dressed particularly well. Hoodie, sweetpants, you know the deal. Enter the cast. M. Entitled mother, generally snooty looking, like she was trying really hard go look wealthy but nothing she had on was actually valid bail, obviously fake jewelry etc. Ek. Entitled kid, maybe 12-13, large, positive he had some kind of autism or Asperger's due to his general mannerisms, and, well, screeching. I noticed that M and Ek are staring at me, not a big deal, especially since this is an upper class area and I'm, well me, with my demeanor. Eventually M and Ek walk over to me and M says, M, you, where did you get that? Me, um, I bought it, M, how, me, how do you think? M, people like you can't afford phones like that, you must have stolen it. At this point I'm sort of in shock and speechless. She follows up with, M, I should report you to the police, but I'm willing to let this go, if you hand the phone over to my precious baby son, now, me, why would I do that, M, because you stole it, and don't deserve it, me, you're not getting my phone beach, at this point the manger superbus or assertive staff member, I'm not sure, but I'm calling him manager from here, walks over after noticing the situation and tries to calm everyone down, Manager, ma'am I need you to keep it down this is a coffee shop. M, this woman called me a beach after stealing my son's phone. Manager, wait what? M, I want a full refund, my phone back and some compensation. Manager, ma'am you need to give her the phone back or I'm calling the police. Me, but it's my phone. M, that's my son's phone new beach. Manager ma'am that's clearly not your phone. I will call the police if you don't give the phone back. At this point Ek is screeching, I can't really make out what he's saying, but he's reaching for my phone. Having dealt with racism all my life I began to go off at all three of them so naturally police were called. The police immediately apprehended me, and only me, and confiscated my phone. They also took M, Ek, and manager's statements, before taking mine last. All three of them told the cops an exaggerated version of events. At this point you'd have thought I was some homeless black person who'd just mugged a 13 year old. If you believed the story they told. I gave them my statement and told them I would refuse to cooperate any further until they checked security footage. The coffee shop refused to let them check. Since as far as they were concerned it was clear I was a thief and I'd been apprehended so what's the point. Eventually the security footage was checked after several minutes of convincing and everything became very awkward after that. The police awkwardly apologized and even went out of their way to say we weren't working on racial stereotypes just responding to the scene that was reported. None of the coffee shop staff actually said anything to me once I was apprehended. Juice I'm not going back there now. Ek never stopped screeching even as I left. After being released from police, M seemed completely unfazed by the security footage continuing to claim that I must have stolen it from someone else because my type can't afford those phones. So that was another day off ruined by entitled to parents and racial profiling. I wish I could say I was surprised by the absolute gall of that women, but to be honest I've experienced so many of these situations nothing surprises me anymore. Little backstory, I work as an actress in a haunted house. I love this job so much, I look forward to it every year. Now, we have an age limit. You have to be 16 or older to attend alone. Anyone younger must be accompanied by a parent. We really stress that anyone below the age of 16 really shouldn't go through at all. It's not meant for kids, but a lot of parents for some reason don't understand this. Now, onto the story. M you already know. PK poor kid. Seriously, I felt bad for her. Me the main zombie of this story. So my job is to roam around the lines outside of the attraction to entertain customers while they wait to enter the house. I take pictures with them, scare them, basically put on a show to entertain them. As I'm stalking around, I see a small child in line. Wonderful, someone brought a kid. That means lots of crying. 
However, the kid made eye contact with me and smiled. Now we do have the occasional brave kid who actually enjoys it. I assumed this was the case. I slowly walked towards her, drooling and putting on my usual zombie show. This girl can't be older than 8. As I get closer, I can see she's getting a bit more uncomfortable, so I back off a bit. I give her a little wave, letting her know I'm friendly and don't want to bother her. She waved back, and her mom turned around to see what she was waving at. She flipped out. She started screaming at me that I was a pervert for looking at her daughter, that I was scaring her and should be ashamed of myself. How dare I scare her daughter, I traumatized her for life, blah blah blah. All the while her daughter is more afraid of her own mother than the zombie in front of her. I lower my voice so no other customers can hear, as I don't want to break character too much. I explain that she paid for her daughter to come in here. We scare people at a haunted house. If she is really that scared it'd be happy to escort them out. That seemed to make her even more upset and said I was discriminating her and her daughter just because she's a child. That's when she broke a major rule. She shoved me. I mean shoved. I fell backwards into a big mud puddle. Now I've been pushed before. Some people just have that reaction when fear scared, and they quickly apologize. I wasn't hurt, just dirty. However, this was on purpose, not an accident. Policy says I have to report it. I went over to the police we have on scene, and they had to escort the mom and daughter off the property. The mom was screaming the whole time about what a ripoff this was, how they have child predators working here, blah blah blah. Listen to all parents out there, if you bring a kid to a haunted house, be aware that we are going to scare them. It's just our job. Background info. I just started working at Starbucks. It's a great time. At my place we close at 6. We do a call 5 minimum before closing for final drinks and to let customers know that they will need to leave when it hits 6. Because we need to clean the place and wash all the machinus chemically rinse certain things as you do with a coffee machine no matter where you are or I'm not too sure as I'm new, but I know it takes a tad to clean them and stuff. I'm cleaning the front outside area and my coworkers are out back doing minor things and cleaning dishes. Cast. Me. Newbie. Ed. Entitled dad. CK1 and 2. His cute kid see me entitled. I blame the dad. SM. Super awesome shift manager. So it's 6 10 p.m. and we have officially closed. My coworkers and I are cleaning the store. The signs have been brought in. The chairs inside are all stacked. The food has been put away. You can clearly see that there is nothing out and that everything is clean. I'm finishing bringing in the last of my tables from outside the store. And as I'm about to close a door two cute kids run inside. They're probably about 5 ish and 7. And in comes their dad behind them. Ed, oh are you guys closed? Me, yes sorry, we closed at 6 we're just finishing up cleaning. Ed, well your door was open, so I guess you're not closed. Am I right? Lucky us, hi boys. Me, sorry the door was open, so we could bring in all the outside furniture, and I was just closing it before your children ran inside. Sorry could you please ask them to stop playing with the merchandise as it breaks easily. Sorry. As him saying this his kids are running around touching the merchandise and playing with the straws and so on. And he completely ignores my statement. Ed, well that's completely unacceptable. As a business, if your doors are open you are still expected to serve customers. You can do a couple of drinks for us. It's only us three no big deal. Me, I'm sorry but all the equipment and produce have been put away and cleaned. The machines are currently going through their cleaning cycle, so I don't think we can make you a drink. If we made you a drink it would not be consumable as there would be cleaning chemicals and so on. And we've already cashed up for the night, so the till and eft pass aren't working. Once again I'm not too sure, since it's not my job to clean the machines. But I told him what I knew, and I knew that the drinks couldn't be made. Ed, are you saying you won't make us any drinks? Just give them the drinks I'm sure they will be fine. I can't believe this. I promised my boys some hot drinks and I need a coffee after such a hard day at work. Just make us our drinks and well head off. Me. I'm really sorry about this. But we can't make you any drinks they will not be consumable at this time. I think there is a McDonald's a minute down the road. Yeah I'll be able to get some drinks for 
As I said this, he got a lot closer to me, him about 54, and he was probably at least 61. And he pretty much just started to yell in my face. Ed, why would you tell me to go to McDonald's? I'm not that cheap and my kids deserve better. The drinks are horrible there and not good for kids. Stop whatever you've been doing and make our orders. Your customer service is horrendous. Is there anyone else here? By this time my other co-workers had noticed this loud noise and had come out anyway. My shift manager comes up to the guy and says pretty much the same things I did at the start and then says, SM. Looked we've been closed for 20 minutes now sir. Please leave my cow walker alone as she has done nothing wrong. Please stop trying to intimidate her into getting your way. I can point you in the right direction to where you can get your drinks or you can get out of the store. Ed looked pretty flustered by having a male come out and tell him what's what. So he tells the kids to go and he leaves and slams the door. So my shift manager is pretty cool and I'm happy I didn't have to deal with him any longer. Buckle up buckaroos. This is a long one. During my last few years of high school I delivered newspapers every morning. The money wasn't great, but it was my first job. I really enjoyed the peace and quiet that comes with being awake before the sun rises. It was an enjoyable experience, however there were downsides. For example, we had to go around once a month to collect payments, which was a real pain. If you can't get a customer to answer the door, they can't pay you. If a customer decided to simply stop paying you, there was nothing that you could do about it. The subscription could only be cancelled by the customer themselves so, if someone decided not to pay you, the money was taken out of your earnings and the delivery person was the one stuck with the bill. Unfortunately this was extremely common. This would eventually become the reason I quit, since I could not afford to work 2 hours a day and not get paid for it. One morning as I arrived home from finishing my route, my mother was extremely agitated. My boss had called and woke her up 15 minutes earlier because he had started receiving calls from the paper saying that several customers on a route connected to mine had called to say they had not received their paper and that this had happened several times this week. So he had to fire the person on that route. He wanted to know if I could take over the route. The route was only about half the size of the route I was currently doing and would only add about 30 minutes a day to my trip, so I agreed to take it. The first week passes pretty uneventfully. One morning during the second week of doing my new route, a few stops before I finish the route, as I'm heading back over to my bike, after hitting a string of houses I can hear a woman's voice calling out excuse me, hey you, x -ku -u 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 -e me, I turn around to see a woman. She's coming down the driveway in a t-shirt and underwear, holding a newspaper in one hand, and using her free hand, to try to pull the bottom of her t-shirt lower to preserve some sense of modesty. I recognize her of the substitute teachers at my high school. Excuse me, what the f is this, she says holding up the newspaper. I stood there confused for a moment, before replying I'm sorry Ms. Karen, but I don't understand. She cuts me off. I thought I already told you. If you guys are going to fire my daughter for being a little late one day then I do not want your refine paper. Still a little confused I'm sorry Ms. Karen, but I have only had this route for a few days and I'm certain that I'm not the person you spoke with. Maybe you spoke with Mr. Boss? Well if you're not the person I spoke to, then how do you know my name? She said, wearing her smuggest I've got you now face. I'm one of your students. I've been going to the high school you teach at for 4 years. If you want to cancel your subscription you have to call the number. I can't cancel it for you. This obviously wasn't what she wanted to hear. She got really calm for a second and looked at me in the eyes and said you think you're really effing smart don't you? Before throwing the paper at me and turning around to waddle back up the driveway with her granny panties riding up her 45 year old butt crack. I called my boss when I got home. To tell him what happened and that she wanted her subscription cancelled. He told me that when he had called to fire her daughter, Karen had picked up the phone and screamed the same thing at him and that he had also told her that she needed to call the subscription line if she wanted her service cancelled and that the teenage paperboy could not cancel the subscription for her. He also said that when Karen's daughter accepted the job, 
Her mom told her that she would be away every second weekend at her father's and would not be able to deliver the Saturday and Sunday papers and that her mom would deliver them. The next Saturday I received an updated subscription list and checked if her address was still on it. It was meaning that she still hadn't called the line to cancel, so I had no choice but to keep delivering the paper. This continued for a few more months until I was finally able to convince my boss to cancel her paper due to non-payment. One morning on a weekday I accidentally slept in until about 4.30am, which meant I had to rush to get them all delivered before 6.30, which is the cutoff time before a paper can be considered late. I deliver Karen's paper around 6.15, which once again is near the end of my route. This time Karen comes running out, wearing pants this time, and starts yelling at me about how the paper is late, and that she is going to call the paper, and get me fired, just like they did to her daughter for being a little late one time. I tried to explain that her paper, while arriving a little later than I normally deliver it, is still not past the cutoff time, and that e paper, is only guaranteed to be in her mailbox before 6.30, and she of course, in typical Karen fashion, was having none of it. You can't talk your way out of this one. You're going to be so f I'm fired. And she runs back into the house laughing to herself. About 2 hours later I'm sitting in class waiting for first period to start. And who should walk in to teach the class that day but Miss Karen. She has barely taken 2 steps into the class when she spots me and begins shaking her finger in my direction. No, 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 no. Not you. You go to the office now. My entire class is baffled for 2 reasons. The first reason being that was a pretty good kid and didn't get in trouble often, and the second reason being that it happened so quickly after her walking into the room that I couldn't have even had the time to misbehave in any way, shape, or form. I arrive at the principal's office and check in with the secretary. She asks why I was in the office and not in class. Look, Miss Nice Secretary, I know every kid who gets sent to the office probably says this. But I honestly didn't do anything wrong. I then explained what happened between them myself and Karen earlier concerning the paper route and that this was about something that happened outside of school during non-school hours. She looks at me slightly confused and then she nods at another girl sitting in the waiting room and asks if I know who she is. I didn't. I had never seen her before. She was a pretty girl, maybe 2 years younger than me, with short bleach blonde hair, wearing a band tee with the sleeves cut off, and what had to be at least 10 bracelets on each wrist. I can't remember the band, but it was probably some 90s punk band. The fact that she had been crying was obvious. Her rhymacube had been running, and her face was red. I was sent to sit with her in the waiting area. She was sat on the furthest right, with 2 seats to her left. I followed her in letterkette and took the seat on the left. As we sat there waiting to speak to the principal she would periodically play with her bracelets and rings which is how I caught a glimpse of the fresh purple bruise around her wrist. The principal's door opens and the secretary whispers something to him which causes him to glance at me. Mr. Greg could you come in here please? Now pretty girl's eyes light up with recognition, as if she knows who I am, and it's at this point my foolish teenage self realizes that there is something bigger going on than me being kicked out of physics before the class even starts. The principal asks me what happened, and I explain to the best of my ability what had happened that morning. He thanked me, and asked me to have a seat again. When I came out the girl was gone. The principal asked the secretary if there was another teacher available with a free period. She said yes. Miss math teacher is free right now. Should first page her? Yes please. The math teacher escorts me back to class and tells Miss Karen that she needs to go to the principal's office. We spend the rest of the class with a free period. I never say Miss Karen again and as far as I knew that was the end of the story. Until. A few years later pretty girl ended up dating one of my friends and I finally got to hear the rest of the story. Pretty girl was Karen's daughter and her parents were getting a divorce. Karen was a drunk. Apparently she had been the one to get her daughter the paper route because she thought having that job would mean her daughter would have to be at her house every night and never at her father's. Pretty girl had tried the paper route and living with her mom for a while but being the mean drunk that she was, crap deteriorated pretty quickly and pretty girl wanted to go stay with her dad. When she did, there was no one to deliver that papers and that's why she was fired. 
Not because they were a little late, but because around 50 newspapers had not been delivered several days in a row. Without the paper job Karen had lost her imagined bargaining chip and was pissed, which is why she decided I was public school enemy number one, even though all I had done was accept more work. She thought getting me fired from a paper route I had been doing without complaint for 3 years would mean that her daughter would get the job back again. She had called the paper to complain about me, and despite them having probably told her that her paper was not late, she decided to drive over to pretty girl's dad's house and give her the good news that she was getting her job back and give her a lift to school. Pretty girl had told her mom that she did not want the job or the lift and she was not supposed to come over when her dad was not there. Karen didn't like that and dragged pretty girl by her arm to the car. Pretty girl went straight to the office when classes started and asked them to call her dad. He had picked her up while she was in the principal's office. Apparently what I hold told the principal was enough to corroborate pretty girl's story which gave the principal what he needed to speak to the union and have her removed from my school's roster until pretty girl had graduated. That morning's event had also been a deciding factor in her dad get full custody. This time, Karen did not get the kids. Thank you for watching. Slap that like button and comment your opinion on these stories below. I'm waiting. Write that comment. Seriously. Have you written it yet? If you don't comment, you make a bunny cry somewhere. You're not that kind of person. I know. Anyways, peace out, and catch you tomorrow.